Hey, good morning, everybody. It's Monday morning. We are here pouring a 2424 garage. We've got two inches of slope on it. We're using our regular floor mix, 3500 PSI, with fiber mesh, with water reducer. We're going to get this thing poured today. This is the only pour we got for today. Then we're going to go from here up to a pool deck we're doing about a half hour from here and get that finished getting that ready for the pour tomorrow. That's a stamp pool deck. But today, let's get this floor poured. This shouldn't take us too long. We're just going to screed it by hand because it slopes two inches this way. The poly under there is just to help keep moisture from coming up through the floor afterwards and we'll power trial this today and we'll get a stock cutter today so we'll be all done here today then they can schedule in the builders so with the water reducer in there we can we can take what would be like a three inch slump and make it into like a seven inch slump with a water reducer without really having to add water. So they put that right in at the plant when they batch the truck. You know, and so the water cement ratio stays really, really low. Even though it looks wet, the water cement ratio is really low on this. So it's really strong concrete. 3,500 PSI concrete, if they took a cylinder and they, you know, did the brake test on it, it would break at least 35, if not 4,000. Probably pull my head just one time, then flip it. Lately, we've been getting the concrete and it feels a little what I call bony, just rocky. So it kind of separates a little bit, but this stuff looks like it's staying together pretty good. Usually you'll see pockets of just like rock and then pockets of where it looks good. This looks a little more consistent this morning for whatever reason. I don't know why. Maybe they changed something in the mix. So what I'm doing now is I'm checking my middles because this slopes two inches. I want to make sure I got the grade stick set right exactly to the slope so the middle when we shoot the wet pad in the middle we're right on perfect I gotta go up just a little bit more that should be a solid beep without the bottom of the stick sinking in to the concrete right there perfect now I can make this pad in the middle pretty good So a fast beat means I gotta go down. A slow beat means I gotta go up. And a solid beat means I'm perfect right there. Oh, when that's good, I put the X on it like that. And that means I'm that's the exact same as that. Hey, look, so now as soon as you get done dumping like that. Yep. You see, me and Darren have gone around and started a mag, so now you've got something a little bit better to go by. Mm -hmm. So now, here's what I would do. Okay. I'd grab my come along, I'd come right up in here. See how he's leaving these footprints everywhere? Yeah. See how they're kind of low? Yeah. So I want to be able to just, we call this tuning it in, right? Mm -hmm. I want to be able to tune that in, fill them in, so when the guys come with a straight edge, yep. they don't have to kick concrete in there with their boots. Right. So I'm going to go right behind him. Yeah, I'm just yeah. lightly pushing it. No, I don't want to push it up so much I screw up his pad that he just, just like made. Light, really just light. lightly, yeah. Alright. 
All right, as soon as them guys grab that rod, you jump right behind them. Because you're like their blood. You keep things moving for them. If, if, if the concrete's not right, then they have to stop. Yep. So if these guys have to stop and stand up and kick, yep. that means we, we need to jump quicker, you know? Yep. So the key to this, the key to puddling is making sure they're not low. I can see Luke is a little bit low right now because he's having to kick up too much. So you got to push that mud up in there so they don't have to stop. They can finish that bay without stopping. We've got plenty of mud here. If we're low over here, that's okay. We'll just swing the chute around, get a little bit more in there. But as they're screeding, we don't want them to stop if they don't have to. Hey, break. There. You look tired. What? I might have to back you up a little bit. Let me see where it goes over there. They're low over there too. No, I think you'll be okay. Yep. Drop it down, run a little bit. I'll pull it in there. I need my cardio today. The way you fell fall out. Just a little bit, yeah. Good. All right, we'll move it back there. A little bit right there. Whoa. No. So, see how that's low? Push that, there you go. Good. Close. Yeah. How's everything at the farm this morning? A little, right. little chaotic? No? Looks low to me. Looks what? Looks low. Looks low? Another bucket in there. Watch the truck. Either you can start over here and go this way first if you want. Now we got plenty. Dad, start this way first. Let me show, let me tell them why. So, when we straight edge, you know, if we're straight edging this way, yep. although Darren and I are perfect, if if we straight edge and we dig in or we ride high a little bit. If you go the same way, then the bull float's gonna do that too, right? Okay. If you go perpendicular, then as that bull float goes this way, it's gonna flatten that out a little bit better. Okay. So if there's ever a chance you can go perpendicular to the way we, we screed, that's the best way to bull float. Okay. A lot of times you can't because there's stuff in the way. Okay. So I would go like with the lines. All right. If they're screeding this way, then you wanna bull float this way if you can, okay? okay. Yep. And that'll tell you if you've got a low spot or a high spot, the bull float will tell you. It doesn't lie. All right. It'll talk to you. Are you ready, Luke? Uh, uh, you can do this, all right. 
<laughs> That's good. I wouldn't go over that again. Right. Yep. Even though you did have a little dig yeah, digger yeah, there, that's gonna that's gonna be okay. All right. Yep. And remember, as you come back, yeah, I was okay. gonna do another pass. So yeah. I, no, that's fine. But yeah, I overlapped that a couple inches like that. Yeah. See, if we if we had a hump or a dip in there, you that wouldn't be flat across the bullfold like that. Okay. It would show. I think you could reach out a foot less. Okay. Because you're going to end up running one this way anyway. Right. So the whole width of the bull float will be fine. All right. So that looks good. Yeah, just keep that up. Because right now you just created a swale in there, right, by doing that? Yeah. I'd finish, and then maybe I'd come back after, and I'd get over there, and I'd just run, run right down the middle of that swale this way. Okay. 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 How we doing? Good. How'd Tardif do for you, okay? Oh yeah, good. Does, does he talk too much? Does he talk at all? <laughs> yeah, do another one, Luke. So we always try to mag out the bullfold lines if they're right, especially if they're right by a doorway like this. So when the concrete sets up a little bit, we'll taper. We'll taper these doors a little bit, like from here down this way. We'll taper that down about a half inch so the doors sit on the flat part. And then they have a taper in case it rains, water won't run back up under the drain, um, the door. So we just like to make sure that that's nice and flat like that before we do the taper. So we get rid of these lines while the concrete is still pretty, pretty plastic or wet. And then when the guys come later on, you know, probably be 30 to 45 minutes from now to cut that down when the concrete firms up and they won't have to deal with that. That ridge from the bull float. We don't taper the three foots down. We leave those flat, but we still like to mag out. Like whenever you stop and start the bull float, <laughs> it leaves a little bit of a divot there, no matter what you do. So. If that's right in front of a door, we like to just mag that out a little bit if we can. Just like that, flatten it out. Yeah, it's gonna make their life a little easier when they, when they go to finish. Where should I go? all right so that's going to do it for this 24 24 we had 10 and a half yards i think we used most of it he doesn't have much left on there it was pretty thick in the back it was like six and a half inches thick in the back so it'll be i don't know it's probably like 7 30 in the morning right now probably at least an hour before the guys got to get on this and stop finishing but it should it's supposed to be about 90 today so this thing will probably be done around noon time one o'clock but the rest of us will leave probably leave one guy here the rest of us are going to head up to a different town half an hour from here and finish setting up a pool deck stamp pool deck for tomorrow so we'll see you on that